Hey guys, welcome to today's webinar. This is Sarah Zastro from Cultivate Balance, and today we're talking all about mindset. So um, mindset is really important, especially in the midst of a pandemic, and we're going to talk a little bit today about what it is, what we can do, and um, so yeah, I have a presentation for you. So I'm going to do a screen share here, and let's see here we go we'll start at the beginning that's probably the most helpful here okay so today let's talk about mindset and so what mindset is is um let's look at it so what mindset is there are kind of several parts here and everybody's definition varies for the purpose of today though we're going to talk about how to have a positive outlet so how you can be kind of more optimistic and have just in general uh, a brighter view of life We'll talk about how to flip your mood upside down. I know that this morning I woke up and there were piles of dog vomit on my carpeting after I specifically told someone not to give the dog bones, you know, which really just, you know, is the greatest way to start your day. And so um, sometimes it's a conscious decision to be in a good mood, and that's certainly easier said than done. So I have a little trick, so I'll teach you how to do that. And so we don't want our, uh, you know, a few bad minutes to ruin our whole day. And so we're going to talk about how to flip that mood. And then also knowing that you can weather any storm and whether it's the pandemic that we're dealing with right now or storms in the future, just knowing that you have um, the strength, the mental energy and the tools that you need to weather any storm that comes your way is part of having a strong mindset. And then finally, we'll talk about growth in any situation, how to grow in any situation. And so you'll notice terms, um, maybe in the media, on social media, things like that, about having a growth mindset. And so we'll talk about what that means today and also if you're ready for that. And so I just want to sort of throw out a disclaimer that if you are still feeling really stressed out, you're feeling the anxiety you're feeling maybe even the um, stages of grief as a result of this pandemic. We're not going to worry about that part yet. Um, but if you're feeling pretty good, you're working your way into a quote unquote new normal, um, then we can talk about how to use this situation to grow, to regroup, and to really um, use this time to sharpen your saw. So how to have a positive outlet, hands down, the best way to sort of trick yourself into becoming a more positive person is to do a daily gratitude practice. So what I do is I wake up first thing in the morning and I, you know, of course, start the coffee pot right away. And I have in my coffee filters, you know, there's a little pit in the middle of the coffee filters, a little notebook. And what what I write down are three good things that happened yesterday. So I call this the 3D effect because what happens is when you remember three good things and then you write them down, from yesterday, your body releases a double dose of dopamine, hence three Ds, double dose of dopamine. And so since your body, since your brain doesn't actually know the difference between a memory that happened yesterday and something good that's happening right now, we can use this to our advantage. So it starts your day off with sort of this rush of dopamine that helps your mood get a little bit better, helps you have a little bit of energy in the morning. And if you're not familiar with dopamine, it's an endorphin that helps us to feel loved and valued and, and things like that. It also helps to lower our stress level. Now, how does this make you have a more positive outlet, there's kind of two ways. So first off, that dopamine will actually encourage you to search for more good things, okay? So as our brain is working throughout the day, it's constantly filtering information. Some things we just 
aren't important. Some things that you notice just aren't important. Your, your brain doesn't need to remind you that the grass is green or that the sky is blue, but even if we glance at the grass, so it sort of filters that information. Now, if our brain knows that tomorrow we're gonna have to remember to write down three good things, it will be filtering information that, rem that the things that we can write down for tomorrow. Okay, so it's a way to rewire your brain. It reprograms your brain to be more positive. And I know that when I first started doing this, it was amazing the things that I would write down. And I tried not to write down the same thing every day. Um, but what we wanna do is look for simple moments. Okay, so not overarching ideas. I'm grateful for my family and my whatever, dog and my home and food to eat, but simple simple moments, okay? Simple things that happened yesterday. So for example, I am thankful that yesterday I had a great cup of coffee. I'm thankful that my husband and I watched a really funny movie. I'm thankful that uh, whatever, the chicken that I cooked for dinner turned out because it was a new recipe and I wasn't sure how it was going to go, right? So simple moments, those are the things we want to write down. And that is what um, triggers that dopamine is the, the moment in time, the memory of that good thing. And so I call these bright spots. So we want to write down three bright spots that happened yesterday. Okay, so um, this is a great tool. There's a ton of research on gratitude practices, and it's just a really great way to, uh, to trick your mind to be more positive. So I think it's the best way. So that's number one. You probably have a pad of sticky notes or a little notebook sitting around ho at home. Um, and so use that time while your coffee's brewing. It takes, after you um, get into a good rhythm, it doesn't take very long at all. I can do it in 10 seconds, right? And so it's not something that takes a lot of time, but to rewire your brain to be more positive, the payout is really, really incredible. Okay, now this mood thing, right? The dog pukes on the carpeting, how to transform even the worst mood. There's a couple things you can do. You know, you can uh, flood your, your mind with gratitude. You can focus on the good things, take deep breaths, do a little exercise. But this personally is what works for me, okay? So when I'm in a bad mood, um, you know, whether it's dog puke on the carpet or uh, whatever, it can be anything. Whether your kid's throwing a tantrum or you just got in a fight with your spouse or there's 400 things to do in 20 minutes to get it done, Having an external thing that can put you in a good mood, I think is the best way to do this. And so what I create is a power playlist. So this is a group of songs that help you to feel a certain way. So for my pain clients, I teach them to have three power playlists. One is a power playlist to help you relax and sleep at night. So it's all gentle melodies. Maybe it's some uh, gospel music. Maybe it's just a gentle, um, gentle song with some real soft lyrics. I teach them to have a gentle song to help them relax, a song to help them energize. Um, so like if they're feeling really tired, that's a good one too. I do that a lot, especially when you don't have time to get in a nap and you don't necessarily want to drink that 15th cup of coffee for the day. Having a power playlist, something to get that blood pump and get you energized is a really good tool. And then of course, for this situation, I teach my clients, and this is a great thing to transform your mood, to have a playlist that helps you to feel um, happy, to feel energized, to feel empowered. And so you can choose whatever songs you want to be on here. So one of mine that I have is the song Happy by Pharrell. I have Uptown Funk. I have Party in the USA. Um, I have White T-shirt by Tim McGraw. Like it can be whatever songs you like. Um, and so some things that I do are just look through like what's an 80s rock song? What's a 90s rap song? And this can be anything. It doesn't have to be those, but we all love 80s rock and um, 90s rap. I always think about, you know, whatever, Ice Cube and all, all the good uh, classic rappers from the 90s, you know. Um, and then also maybe it's more easy listening. Maybe it's soft music. Maybe it makes you happy and 
feel good and, you know, reminds you of your childhood, whatever that can be. Um, or maybe it's gospel music. Maybe you just need the word of God to penetrate your soul. Whatever works for you, you get to create the playlist that helps transform your mood. And so there's a lot of internal things that we can do. The deep breathing, count to five, you know, uh, do the five senses, do a mindfulness, body scan, whatever. But I think the best way is to have an external factor, an external playlist uh, to help transform that mood. And I just have it on my phone. It's super easy. I created a playlist. Um, you can do it in Pandora or Spotify or uh, wherever, even on YouTube, I think has that uh, option. So that is a great way, hands down, best way to transform your mood. And then knowing that you can weather the storm. And this is a choice, okay? So we um, talk sometimes about affirmations. And what an affirmation is, is something that you need to be reminded of frequently that helps to pump yourself up, that helps to remind yourself that you can do this. So maybe it's just saying something like, I can do this. Maybe you say something like, I was made to grow in difficult situations. We've all heard the thing where um, when they thought it was all darkness, they realized they'd been planted, right? Or that uh, the bow and arrow, the, the archer has to pull the bow, the a uh, bowstring back in order for the arrow to go forward, things like that. So things that help you to remember um, that you can do anything you want to do. So I never quit. I'm a warrior. Today is going to be an awesome day. Or then my favorite is everything is figure outable. I'm reading a book right now. And of course it's called everything is figure outable. And it's by Marie Forleo. And she's kind of a um, person, a, a woman in business. And what she does is repeats to herself when she feels stuck or frustrated or like the solution or the answer isn't easy. She says to herself, everything is figure outable. It's something that her mom taught her. But after reading this book, I realized that if I create that affirmation in my life, it stops any negative thought, any um, way that I, any limiting belief, any way that I might stop myself from finding a solution. If I always repeat to myself, everything is figure outable. Okay, so we all know with all these affirmations, whether it's everything is figure outable or uh, I choose to see the positive even in the tough times, we all know that the words that we say are powerful. The words that we say become our thoughts, they become our choices, they become our actions, and they become our results. And so it's important to choose positive affirmations versus the affirmation WTF or I can't believe this crap is happening again, or, you know, whatever, throw your hands up in the air, repeating positive things that you grow into that like a promise to yourself will, instead of keeping you stuck, will help you to grow forward. And so, or to grow taller or whatever. So that this is important that these affirmations help you to know that you can weather the storm. And then sort of like an affirmation is a mantra. And so mantras are a little bit less um, uh, structured and they're a little bit more just things that you need to remind yourself of. So some of these are scriptures. So you've seen a lot lately, this too shall pass. Or some of them may be song lyrics. There's some really powerful song lyrics out there that help you to remember, um, you know, whatever you need to remember. You can do, do anything you want, any song that you like. Some of the ones that I use are I am at peace, in control, and filled with hope. Just some good things to help remind myself that I want to be filled with good and hope and joy and to push out the rest. Um, another thing that is really, really powerful, sometimes it's easy to be frustrated by other people, um, especially in situations where there's extreme stress. So say for instance, you are working on a team of people right now. And like me, we don't have any children. My husband is working. So I'm kind of at home all day. I've been getting a ton done and it's been great. And my house is cleaner than it's ever been. And I'm getting a ton done for my business. Um, 
but some people are not. Some people are swimming in the stress and anxiety of this situation, and they're trying to homeschool their kids for the first time, and they're trying to figure out tech issues, and they've got three kids and them and their spouse all trying to share one laptop. I mean, there's lots of extenuating circumstances right now, and it's easy to be frustrated with other people. And whether it's the bonehead in the grocery store taking 15 rolls of toilet paper, or you know, your coworker who hasn't gotten anything done that she said she would, it's important to remember to give people grace. So what I tell myself as a mantra is everyone is doing the best they can with the information they have at the time. That person, even though she's got nothing accomplished, even though they took 15 rolls of toilet paper, they're doing what they think is best. And no matter what I think is uh, not acceptable or under par or quite frankly, baloney, it doesn't matter because they are doing their best. And my thoughts about them don't matter. They're doing their best and that's, that's all we can expect, right? So it's important to remind yourself that, especially if you're a person who gets uh, short-tempered with other people, which is me, by the way. <laughs> um, and then, so another one that I do is to, and I do this with hand motions. I think you guys should still be able to see me, but I say, breathe in peace and joy, push out fear and anger. In peace and joy, breathe out fear and anger. And this just reminds myself to reset. And it's a good thing to do when I'm feeling frustrated or overwhelmed or angry, right? Or fearful. Um, and you can replace those words with anything you want, but pairing it with your breathing, I think does a really good job of really making that stick. Triggers are something, another thing that you might find helpful. So it's something that you, it, it can be, you can do this one of two ways. A, you can just remember it, or B, you can put a sticky note on your door jam. Okay, so what it is, and you can make this, it doesn't have to be a door jam, but that's the example we're going to use today. Every time you enter a doorway, so whether you're walking from your kitchen into the bathroom, or walking into the house, or out of the house, or into your bedroom, there should be, you can put a sticky note on that door jam that says how you want to feel. Okay, so I have kind of three things, and these are definitely the, um, my values in life, okay? So every time I go through a doorway, I repeat to myself, and I have a sticky note that says peace, joy, and hope. I want to be at the end of the day when everything is said and done, I want to be more than anything else, peaceful, joyful, and hopeful. And if I have that sticky note in my door jam, every time I enter the doorway, I see it. And I remind myself as I enter this room, enter it with peace and joy and hope. And it just helps to bring my mood down a little bit, to help me calm down, to find that peace, joy, and hope because I'm the one who wrote that sticky note. I'm the one who values those things. I'm the one who wants to be filled with that. And so I look at it and it reminds me to choose that. Those are conscious choices that we have to make every day, multiple times a day probably. Um, and so it's just a good way to remember that. You can make this trigger anything. Um, maybe it's every time you get in your car. Maybe it's every time you uh, see your children. Maybe it's every time you see something else in your home. I have a trigger for the sky and that every time I look up, I just think about um, that I am a tiny puzzle piece in a huge world of the huge puzzle of the world. And that if I do the best I can, then everything will fall into place. I don't know why I have thought of that. It's just a um, thing that I've kind of always done. So you can make triggers anything you want. And they're just reminders that help you remember your values and remember to live in that every day. Okay, and then timers. This is another thing too. If triggers are a little woo-woo for you, that's okay. Timers are something I set in my phone. So I literally go to my, um, my phone timers app or reminders, and I set in the things that I want, want to remember, want to be. So maybe you write in there, I am a calm and present mom. Maybe you write in there, I am a driven and fierce business person. Maybe you write in there, whatever, I am patient and kind. Um, what I write, again, I told you the, my values are peaceful, um, hopeful, and um, joyful. For this one, I wrote inspirational because when I use my phone, this is kind of funny. When I use my phone, I should be using it for something productive, not, um, you know, scrolling cat memes on Facebook, um, which sometimes I do. 
But if I have that reminder in my phone, I'm more likely to use my phone to become those things, not scrolling cat memes on Facebook. Right. So that's why I put the inspirational in there because I want to be inspirational. Um, cat memes are not inspirational. So I better use that phone uh, for, for good things that help me to be more inspirational. And then it also helps me to remember that multiple times a day. So I set these timers for 9.30, 1.30, and 4.30. And 9.30, just because that's the time that I should be like working by that point and getting things together and getting things done. 1.30, because it's after lunch and I want to regroup and refocus. And then 4.30, because I always get hungry at that time of day and um, I get a little snacky. So I need to remember to uh, not just graze all afternoon but to come back to work and stay focused, stay peaceful, inspirational, and hope filled. So those are timers, another good, good trick. Okay, guys, so I hope you found this day helpful. Um, what we want to do here is make sure that these are all practical. They're all applicable tips to help you be, um, have a better mindset, have a growth mindset. And so um, if you are really struggling still with the stress and anxiety and grief surrounded by COVID-19, don't worry about this yet. Okay, you got to work through, work through that, work through those stages of grief before you focus on growth. Um, However, I know that for me and for a lot of other people, um, I do not feel, I feel really stuck unless I can focus on bettering myself during this time. So I feel really stuck right now um, unless I am purposely growing in some area. So what I do is spend a little bit of time each day and you get to decide if that's three minutes or you know an hour based on your schedule and your situation situation here um, where you grow in one or more area during this time. Okay, so um, we, we said we'll talk about growth mi mindset and fixed mindset. And so these are kind of the differences. So growth mindset is just a frame of mind that you decide that you can learn anything you want to, that you persevere, you challenge yourself, you learn from failure, and you succeed, okay? And you try and try again. You are constantly looking for opportunities of growth. And not that that means 24, seven, seven days a week, but every day you choose to grow in some area. And then a fixed mindset is that if you aren't there yet, okay? So some people just never get there and that's totally fine. However, I think it helps me to be in a growth mindset. So, and that is when you or so a fixed mindset is when you just feel stuck, when you're frustrated, you give up, you kind of quit more uh, readily. You don't like to be challenged. You don't like to fail. Um, and, and you feel like, it, you're set in your ways, like everything that you have that you're ever going to have, you were born with. And growth is when you figure it out along the way. So um, what are the areas that you can grow in? And I just want to say a little disclaimer here. I'm not saying that during the quarantine, you need to learn how to be a, a knitter or learn how to write a book or learn how to program a website. These are just simple things that you can do to help yourself learn a new skill. Okay. So for example, I watched a three minute YouTube video about how to braid my hair. So it looked like I had a mohawk and it was really cool. It cost me three minutes of time and I've been talking about it for like two weeks now. Okay, these don't have to be these huge things that you're learning and developing this new skill. It was a three minute video, right? But it helped me to feel like I had accomplished something, like I had used that day to, to, to learn something good. It was really fun and I got a cool new haircut out of it or a new hairdo out of it. So it doesn't have to be huge, right? But Maybe you pick one of these areas on the left-hand side of your screen and really choose to dive in. And again, you get to choose how much you want to, but some areas that you can choose to grow in, you can choose one or more, are your faith. So maybe you spend uh, four minutes a day in prayer. 
Maybe you exercise every day, get physically stronger. Um, intellectual, maybe you do learn a new skill. You want to learn, you have the time. And so um, now's a good time. Uh, environmental growth. So this is going to be like using this time to clean up the ditches that are all filled with trash. Maybe it's going to be that you're using this time, you go to, um, when you're at Meijer, you take a trash bag and you take your gloves and you pick up all the other people's gloves for, from the people who decided to be irresponsible and throw their gloves on the ground. So you grow your environment by cleaning it up or helping it be better, okay? Maybe you get an indoor house plant. It doesn't matter what it is, but helping your environment. Maybe you put hearts on your window, okay? Um, so improving your environment. Mentally, so this is, We'll talk about the difference a little bit here between mentally and emotionally. Mentally is like your problem solving skills, your memory, um, your cause and effect, the skills that you need to, to think. And emotions are the feelings. Okay. So emotionally, um, maybe you're becoming more resilient. Okay. Maybe you have, you're developing your emotional intelligence. Maybe you are um, working toward being, uh, controlling your anxiety. Maybe you're working about um, on controlling depression by working on mindset things and really diving deep into um, the, the aspect of that. Remember that um, if you need a counselor during this time, that's always a great option. I can recommend tons of counselors around this area, or of course there's always betterhelp.com. Um, and then financial growth. So maybe you're using this time to put together a budget, right? Financial uncertainty is running rampant right now. And so getting on top of that is a good thing to do during this time. And then of course, social growth. Now, social distancing does not mean social isolation. So what we need to do are still remain social with our friends via phone, via Zoom, FaceTime, uh, Snapchat, whatever. Whatever. social media it doesn't matter but remaining social is really important and if you can maintain or grow during that time that's a great thing I know I go to lots of different nursing homes and they are lonely right now they're looking for things to do so if you want to write letters to you know your local nursing home or assisted living facility that's a great thing to do call a friend on the phone uh, reconnect with somebody that you haven't talked to in years and years there's some really good opportunities for growth here if you have the time Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today. So um, I'm just hoping that you learn some practical tools today. We have our daily gratitude practice. Um, we have our triggers, our timers, the mindset, the growth things, the mood triggers, that power playlist. And so I'm hoping that you learned something, got a glimmer of, of hope from our five tips today. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you have not joined our Facebook community, it's a really fun place where we post all kinds of helpful tips and tricks to manage stress. And then also, oh, I think I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but um, er, in a video earlier last week, I talked about phone lock screen. So what that is, I will stop our screen share here. What that is, is the screen that you look at on your phone. So see, isn't that cute? I made those, I made a whole bunch of them and they're just good ways, good things to remember so that every time you look at your phone, you see something positive. And so if you've got whatever, pictures on your kids there or dogs or whatever, that's great. However, if you're looking for reminders on how to choose joy, how to be hopeful, how to find those bright spots, then I made a bunch of phone lock screens for that. So I'm gonna send those to everybody um, who's on this webinar. If you don't get them, let me know and I'll resend them to you. Um, and so I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you are filled with peace and joy and hope and you have a growth mindset during this crazy time of uncertainty. It's a good opportunity to tackle some of those things. Remember, you don't have to devote eight hours a day to it, but 10 minutes will be perfect. You guys have a great day and we'll see you later.